Hello friends, you're with the Lonesome Gamer and tonight I'm gonna play Where There Is Discord War in the South Atlantic and after we've seen a terrible uh, cover art of a war game lately we can see here how it should be done I think this is just really wonderful, definitely one of the greatest cover arts of war games that I've ever seen. It is a solitaire game, um, not by a big company, basically by a more or less private person called Daniel Hodges. And uh, For many people it seems to be kind of a holy grail in solitaire wargaming or maybe even in wargaming in general. The price of the game is uh, ridiculous high. Even though there was a reprint, now I think it's about 100 euros, but you can also find some demands uh, $250 or more, especially before the reprint, it was simply ridiculous. So, let's see if it's worth it and uh, let's set up the game. So, the game covers the conflict around the Falkland or Malvinas islands in the South Atlantic in the year 1982. They were previously controlled by the British and then there was an invasion by the Argentine military And now the goal of the player who plays the British is to recapture these islands. Um, well, let's start. What, what can we? What do we have here on the map? We have down here some cards. Situation report cards. They also are kind of a timer. We have these event cards here. Here we have different displays, combat display, we had naval patrol boxes. Here we got the our troop ships and they are loaded with the uh, with our ground units. Then here we have a Sea Harriers, there are two Harriers, the Invincible with six Sea uh, Carriers and we have two Carriers, the Invincible with six Harriers and the, um, the Hermes with nine Harriers. And the Harriers here are separated in flight groups. This is a display of the task force. This is kind of the center, the core of the task force, where we have the really valuable ships. We got the, the two carriers and we got troop transports. And uh, these are the, submar uh, the submarines, but they won't remain in here. And to escort these uh, these center ships, we have uh, these warships placed here around the uh, the central zone. Over here, we can see the different bases of the of the Argentine Air Force. We got. Uh, 
I'm not sure about the names. Well, Tree Lu, I don't know. I don't today life. I don't know what the Argentine pronunciation is here. And there, the Canberras of the Argentine Air Force are um, stationed. We have here the uh, Commodoro Rivadavia with the Mirage, San Julian with the Daggers. Rio Gallegros with the Skyhawk and here Rio Grande with the Super Etandar. Etandar. Over here we have a simple <coughs> turn uh, a well about it. Turn, um, not turn counter, damn it. A track was actually the word I was just uh, not aware of. We have a turn track here. And of obviously we, we, can, we can mark our turns, but we also will keep track of the Exocet stock, some uh, special uh, air-to-ground rockets which the Argentine Air Force used against the uh, British ships and of the Argentine supply for the um, for the Argentine soldiers in San Carlos which is on the Falklands. <clears throat> and I will use the word Falklands and not Malvinas simply because it is, well, first of all, more popular. I think more people in the world know these islands uh, under the name Falklands than Malvinas. And in addition, I'm playing the British player and I'm talking English. So I guess it makes sense to call them Falklands. Um, <clears throat> Over here we have the war opinion display. And there are two uh, important values here, the domestic opinion and the international opinion. If the domestic opinion ever falls to zero, we have lost the game right away. Then we have lost all support from the British people and the war is lost. Otherwise, if the uh, domestic opinion should not go down to zero during the game, uh, the game would end here on 28th of May. And then we will simply count how much uh, of San Carlos we control and that then will determine the outcome of the game. Okay, so now before I start, I need to warn you, this game is only and yeah, I think that is not a big exaggeration, it is only about dice rolling. You can see here Oops. And here, mm. I'm coming more. And here, and finally here. So this is what this game is about. It's about dice, it's about dice rolling, <clears throat> and there is very little decision making here involved. It's a little bit like B-17, uh, Queen of the Skies, on a much bigger scale. So the, the whole story is more or less simply told by tables, by the roll of dice, and uh, the influence you have on the outcome of, of things is not really very high. 
a little bit, yes, here and there you can make a few most of the time pretty simple and kind of repetitive decisions but basically the story is told by dice um, this is the sequence of play and this is pretty ridiculous as you can see so uh, during one turn or one day you simply go through all of this not everything happens every day that's important but it is possible and uh, you can see it is a little bit well it, it might be a little bit confusing if you see this for the first time in addition these red lines are pretty hard to read and when I played this game the first time, and I actually I played it just once, I had a lot of trouble doing this. I found it, well, sometimes nearly unplayable, and I was close to simply, simply stop and, and, and yeah, just say, okay, this is not, nothing for me. But... I didn't want to give up that early, so I decided to, to do a sequence of play on my own. And it, it ended up to be, I don't know, 10 or 11 pages or something. And I haven't tried it with this. So if this whole thing is not working, maybe I will finish uh, the video somewhere in the middle. But I think I want to give this another chance, and I think in some... There are some things that make this game interesting for me and that, that make me to want to like this game. And one of these things is definitely the money I paid for it. So uh, I say we, we give it another chance and we try it with my personal player aid. And, and if it works out, fine with the player aid I think I'm gonna I'm gonna load this up on on board game geek because as I said I have the feeling that the game is pretty bad playable only with these uh, with this standard player aid because you have to look up a lot of things in the rules I found also these uh, these tables not terribly helpful um, they are not very they are not really bad but it's sometimes hard to see where you can find what and uh, I found it pretty confusing all the time so and if you have a game where you where basically all you do is rolling die uh, it has to have a fast pace and it doesn't make a lot of sense if you always have to look up uh, the rules what kind of die you have to roll uh, in what combination that that just sucks okay so I think we're now ready to go okay so we start the game in turn one I guess and I think I'm not gonna advance the turn marker during the first day that is already the first problem I have yeah exactly here skip this one of course on the first turn okay great so and then we're going to check the weather and to do this we're going to roll two dice uh, I wonder if there is a it's all a little bit narrow here maybe I can place the dice here somewhere damn it it's not easy to organize all this and these four sided dice are damn hard to pick up with them okay so Two dice to determine the weather. And that's a 10. And let's see. So a 10 means foggy weather. Okay, so. Uh, well. We got here some information on the backside. 
Uh, sadly, I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh man, this is exactly this is exactly what I'm talking about. You have to check all the time. Okay, and the book is not really well organized. I say the weather should be somewhere in the front of the of the rule book because it is one of the first things you, you do but it's somewhere behind so whatever okay it's foggy so we have a scramble modifier what? plus one plus one okay so that means we have a scramble modifier of plus one and I'm gonna explain later what that means so this this goes up here now we have a what degraded detection of the carrier group so let's see where we have that great oh wait a second it's the back side of this one I guess yeah okay and somewhere we have here this is the detection box so we have here a degraded detection and finally we have a C Harrier recovery of 10. So the problem is if we would now uh, launch any of our C Harriers uh, because of the foggy weather it's not so easy for them to land. Uh, it's not a safe a thing to land so uh, they have to roll a, a d10 then and if they roll a 1 they crash and we've lost them so it's definitely not a good idea I guess uh, now to start these sea harriers because we want to keep them <clears throat> and even though the risk might be low uh, I don't want to risk it anyway okay next step is then the event oh and is that so? Yeah, that's... Okay, so we now draw an event card and it says we're fighting blind out here. I can show you the picture. Here we go. And that is now event 28. So what we gotta do is we gotta check here in the event book. And that is now a pretty cool feature of the game because you can usually you can make a choice and uh, so we got to check now for event 28 and this is this one here the fleet's data link system is down preventing targeting information information being shared across the task force you may a do nothing this event card remains face up on the board for each turn it remains on the board all warships under air attack have a radar log indicator of three which is bad this event may only be discarded and uh, what if and when you make the repairs outlined in case B below B withdraw the task force whilst repairs are carried out take the current side rep card and place it face down back on top of the side rep deck then take the previous side wrap card from the discard pile and place it face up on the board. This is now the active side wrap card. Okay, so now we actually have a problem because basically I think we would lose two turns. Uh, but we didn't have any situation report cards on the discard pile right now. So... Uh, I'm not sure what happens here. Probably nothing. I don't really know how to handle this case. It's a, it's kind of, a, kind of an exception because there is no discard pile. So I guess I will, I will simply take the the topmost situation report card anyway and say I'm lucky and I can kind of ignore this event. Ah. Let's put it underneath, eh? Ah, 
Okay, and then we take a look at our situation report card and this is now the top one because this is the first one. And these situation report cards are in a specific order. This is number one and they go down up to number eh, 16 and the last one is then Operation Sutton. So we have to make it through all these situation reports cards before we can do Operation Sutton which is the landing on San Carlos. And you can see here now on these uh, situation report cards um, the air alert assessment and that means I th oh damn it what does it mean I think it means how likely it is that you will be attacked that there will be a raid this would be the um, the airbase intel analysis this would show where the raid would come from in this case uh, the only possible raid might come from Trilu up here uh, later in the game there are more uh, options where the raid could come from and finally we got this Argentine air effort assessment that says um, how many raids are possible and in this case uh, no more than one raid would occur if it would occur at all okay now we come to the next step which is the task force deployment and uh, the first thing we do is we would uh, we take the reinforcements and we could place them here on the task force display uh, reinforcements come uh, this is indicated here by these uh, navy flags here um, on the turn track so here in the first turn of course we don't have any reinforcements then we got the British submarine placement and this is something we will do right now and um, we can now place our submarines here in the naval patrol boxes there are three boxes the coastal box the search box and the exclusion box and it is possible that we will find um, the Argentine submarines or any one of the Argentine task forces uh, in these waters here. The problem is if we attack a an Argentine uh, vessel or a submarine in, a, in the coastal waters uh, this is not good for the, I think, the domestic opinion, maybe even for the international opinion. Same problem with the search box right now. Uh, because of rules of engagement and things like that. So for now, um, the only uh, box where we could do this without any big problems is this exclusion box. Because the Argentines uh, have been warned if they enter this uh, sea area, if they come too close to the task force, they will be uh, attacked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place all my submarines now inside this box and uh, I'm simply hoping they don't come too close uh, during the first rounds. Okay, and then we have the task force display placement. And there are a few rules we have to remember. In the center, there have to be the carriers, which are these two with the white symbols here. The troop ships, which are these here with these blank, one more white brownish symbols. 
Well, actually, these are not troop ships. Yeah, this is a troop ship here, and these are support ships. And also these support ships, they also have to be in the center, and then landing craft, which will be um, join the task force later on. Yeah. So all the other ships are so-called warships, and we can place them anyway anywhere we want. We could also place them in the center and the, with the task force, but I decided not to do so. Because um, it is always possible that the task force will be attacked. And to determine the target we mostly roll two dice. And we can see then here, these red dots, they indicate the probability that this specific zone will be attacked. So in here, it is quite, it is extremely, the probability is extremely high. Here it is, well, half as high, but still quite likely. Why here from the southeast or here from the east, it is not very likely. Um, Still, there is a risk if we don't cover these, uh, if we don't cover any zones of this task force display, because if an attack comes from these zones, then they would attack the inner zone right away. But I'm willing to risk that. We don't have too many uh, of, uh, we don't have too many warships, so. We could, of course, place one in each zone, but I prefer to to place two in these more risky zones and uh, leave two zones, well, open. Okay. So, and then it's this... Uh, Cap placement. What does that mean? It means combat air patrol placements. So we could now, we could now uh, launch some Harriers and let them patrol some of these, um, yeah, some of these zones where we have a feeling that the risk is pretty high that there could be an attack. So obviously, for example, here or maybe here. But we're not going to do that right now, simply because the weather sucks. We have a... Where is the damn marker? Ah, here we go. This we have here, we have foggy weather. So, uh, it is too risky for me to launch now any Harriers, so I'm not going to do that. We have the supply interdiction. We could also launch Harriers to... Um, try to destroy uh, supply ships that uh, go to San Carlos and uh, try to bring yeah, supply to the uh, Argentine troops on San Carlos. But we're also not going to do this simply also because of the weather. The risk is too high for me here. Then we can place the SAS marker. Well, we have some of these SAS guys, some commando teams, surveillance teams here, and we can now decide uh, on which base we want to place them. Again, we want to take the place which we think is the most likely one from where an attack might start, uh, so that we can gather information um, how big the attack is, for example. So that's what we're going to do. And because uh, we know from the situation report card that the only attack uh, uh, st would start from Trilo, if it would start at all, uh, we're going to place our SAS marker here. And then we got these things here, the Operation Sutton Event Reconnaissance. And because it's in this blue, um, 
these blue letters, it indicates for me that this happens only if Operation Sutton has begun. So we don't have to do this right now, actually we cannot do this. And uh, the San Carlos display deployment is also not possible. Okay, so uh, that was the task force deployment then. Now let's do the Argentine naval deployment. We start with the submarine deployment of the Argentine. And that is, um, what we do is, we roll three four-sided dice for each submarine in Puerto Belgrano or at sea. So we have here in Puerto Belgrano now three submarines. And uh, let's see. Okay, we take these three dice. Yeah. Oh, damn, yeah, great. Okay, the next thing would be the submarine versus submarine combat. And this is also something that does not happen right now because there are no submarines in the same naval patrol box. So we can simply go on. I need to, to bring this. I might laminate this and find a better solution how to handle that. It's just a test right now. We got the British submarines versus the Argentine surface group. This also doesn't happen. Ah, uh, gosh. We got the Argentine Navy versus the task force. That is also something that does not happen because they're all still in their ports. But now we come to the next more interesting point. It says scramble, surveillance, and early warning. Okay, so we got to roll 1d10. The modified roll is equal or greater than the air alert assessment number on cart. Then the Argentine stand down. Otherwise they attack. Okay, so the air alert assessment number is 2. So it is not very likely that we'll have an attack here. Actually, they, I think on a 1 they will always attack. Because otherwise, if I would roll a 1 now, because of this scramble modifier, because of the foggy weather, uh, it would be a, uh, a 2 already, and that would be equal. But I think a 1 is always an attack. So I'm going to roll anyway. And that's a 9. So there is no attack by the Argentine Navy. Okay, finally we have some action here on San Carlos. But all this is also something that will not happen in this turn. And then we come to the end of turn. And, uh, well, basically the only thing we have to do is uh, clear the board from obsolete markers. So what we do is we, uh, the, the scramble modifier goes back to zero. We can remove the weather marker and this is and this uh, detection marker here and that's the end of the first day so nothing happened it was a foggy day and uh, yeah that that's that's it okay it's now the second of may we advance the turn marker and we roll again for the weather and that's a nine. Let's, let's see what that is. It's this one here, cloudy. And uh, well, it's nearly the same actually. We still have that plus one scramble modifier here. And we still have that Sea Harrier recovery marker. Yeah, so there is still quite a risk if we want to start our Harriers, which is bad because I really wanted to to destroy these supply uh, transports to some Carlos, and it's a bad thing that I cannot do this. Of course I could risk it, but I don't want to do that. 
So again, this might be a day where everyone stays inside, maybe playing some games. Let's see what happens. We draw an event card. So this says, I counted them all out. 19. Mm -hmm. Let's see what that is. Mm -hmm. This is a very beautiful booklet, by the way. High quality pages. It's really great. So it says... Royal Air Force commanders in London are lobbying intensively for a Vulcan bombing raid on the Port Stanley runway, an operation that will require support from the Sea Harrier Force. You may reject the plan. Domestic opinion falls by two. News of a major dispute over tactics leaks to the media or mount the raid. Problem is that the weather is bad, so I'm, I'm absolutely not sure if I want to do that. Let's see what would happen. We would have to place up to five Sea Harriers from the ready boxes and place them in any free spaces on the British side of the combat display. Well, 3D8 for the Vulcan bomb brand. For every result of a one, a bomb strikes the runway. Then roll 1d6 for each Sea Harry on the combat display. On each roll of 1, the Stanley runway suffers an additional hit. Reduce the Argentine supply level by 1 for each successful runway hit. Well, that is really tempting. Then roll 1d6 a second time. If the number rolled is greater than the number of sea harriers on the combat display, the RAF leaks to the media that the task force did not adequately support our operation. Domestic opinion falls by 1. Then roll 1d8 for each sea harrier on the combat display. If the result is a 1, the sea harrier is shot down. Remove it from the game. Oh, that sucks. Hmm. Problem is, so there, there is quite a risk if we do that that we might lose some sea harriers. Simply because, first of all, it might be shot down. In addition, the weather might also cost us some planes. <sighs> Does that make any sense? Well, I don't think so. I think I will accept that the domestic opinion falls by two. I think I'm gonna do that. It's not great, but I think I can live with that right now. If the weather would not have been so bad, I guess I would have tried it, but... Uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Okay, then we'll take the next situation report card. So that one goes away. Place it underneath here. And the next one is then number two, of course. And you can see here, the level is still two. It's still Trilu and it's still only one, the effort assessment. So it's basically the same. And let's see, any reinforcements? Nope, we can again place our submarines, which we did. Task force is all good. We do the same thing, maybe uh, basically as before, because the weather doesn't allow us much to do right now, I think. The SAS marker stays at the same space, and now we can roll for the Argentine, Argentine uh, naval deployment. So let's start with the submarines. We roll 3d4. Oh, damn, I think I made a mistake here. 
yeah, I made a stupid mistake here. I should have rolled 3d4 per submarine, not for all of them. That was a mistake. Okay, anyway, whatever. I I'm, I'm not going back now. I'm doing it from now on. Hopefully better. So let's start with the first one. And that is, again, no one, so the first one stays in the port, the second one. Okay, here we have now a single one, so that means the second one goes to coastal. So that is placed in here. And then the third one... And that is also no one, so the third one stays also inside the port. Okay. Fine. Let me check again the surface group readiness. Let's start with the patrol group, roll 1d4, and that's a 2, so nothing happens here. We roll for the battle group, and that's a four. And finally, with the eight-sided die, we roll for the carrier. Okay, so again, no one of them is ready for war. Okay, now we got this one, Argentine Navy versus Task Force, and these Argentine... Um, Submarine will now try to find the British fleet, which is not so easy because they are in coastal waters and uh, So we can check this here now The submarine in coastal waters needs to roll with a d10 and only on a 1 it will find the fleet Nope, not in this case. Okay. So nothing happens here. Okay, then we have to do a scramble roll. And only on a one these uh, Canberras here will start an attack. And that's a two. So again, nothing happened during this turn um, so uh, yeah it's all fine uh, okay I'm going now to day three and I'm not gonna go through everything from now on I think only if things are a, a little interesting I'll show you what happens because it's a very long game and it, it's not that interesting basically I'm gonna show you the, the highlights of each day and then it's fine okay it's still cloudy and let's see what the event brings tell the French to get their wires crossed so let's see what that means Intelligence reports indicate that French technicians have secretly been assisting the Argentines with installation and arming of their Exocet stock. The issue is compounded by the fact that the company involved is run by the son of a senior French politician. You may do nothing. Roll 1d4. Add this number to, of Exocets to the existing stock or ask the French to order the removal of the technicians. President Mitterrand complies, but in retaliation the Argentines leak the fact that French companies have been operating in breach of the international arms embargo and highlight the link between the CEO of the company and the French politician. Support for the embargo is weakened and international support falls by one. So. This is actually something I want to avoid. I don't 
I need the international support. I really like that. I think this is pretty important. So I don't want that to go down. And uh, I think I will accept that the Argentine will gain some more of these rockets. Let the French do their business. Ah, damn. Do they have to be that successful? It has to be a four. That was bad luck. So they have now nine of these Exocet rockets. Okay, I made a small mistake here, but it wasn't that bad. Uh, it seems like the I, I kind of miss misread a a one of these uh, one of the uh, one of the English submarines for an Argentine submarine. So it was was that one here. I thought that was an Argentine submarine, which is not the case. So it seems they have only two. Uh, I was wrong here. So there are only two of these submarines of the Argentines, and um, yeah, it is actually written here in this booklet that they had probably four, but two of them were more or less not operational. So. Uh, yeah, and they ended up here in this coastal region. Okay, and the uh, let's see if these two submarines will detect our fleet. So we rolled two ten-sided die, and only a one is a success. Nope. So no danger for the fleet here. And then we can roll we can do this scramble roll and now we got the air alert assessment here we got a level of three but it's still cloudy so there is still a scramble modifier of plus one so only a one will actually make them do an attack which is not the case okay nothing happened on day three on May 3 82 so Let's do another day, the last one for this video, turn four, and uh, let's see what happens here. Maybe a little more this time. Okay, now we have fair weather. This means it is more likely that these uh, that the Argentines will attack, and uh, they can all, the carrier groups of the Argentine could also easily detect us. But they are not ready for war yet, so there is no danger. Let's do the event. We need to call in some debts. So that's event 22. MI6 reports that Argentine intelligence officers are using an Italian bank as a front for efforts to procure new Exocet missiles on the international market. The issue is complicated by the fact that the bank in question has links to the Vatican. Yeah, great. You may organize contacts in the banking community to undermine the bank's standing and sabotage the Argentine plans. The Italian government is outraged at this interference with the international banking system. International opinion falls by one. Or do nothing, row 1d4, add this number of access sets to the existing stock. Well, I think they now have that many of these access sets that it actually doesn't matter. So, uh, I think it's not such a big deal. So, um... Okay, four more, who cares? So they got 13 now. They can start dealing with these things if the war is over. Okay, now that the weather is finally, has finally improved, I'm gonna I'm gonna 
launch a flight group of Harriers to um, to intercept these supply convoys or yeah so I'm gonna take three Harriers and I can I now roll one six-sided die per Harrier if any one or two is rolled, retreat the supply marker one space. Then these harrier harriers go to the flown um, space on the board. So we got now three harriers. I rolled three dice and I need at least one, one or two. Oh, okay. Three of them. <clears throat> well, that was good. Sadly, I cannot retreat now the marker by three, still only by one, but that is not so bad. And now they move here into this flown box of the Invincible. So that means they have to be rearmed now and it is not possible right now to launch them again. I think it takes about 24 hours to completely refit them. Now actually this surface group here, the patrol group, is ready for war and uh, because there was no surface deployment, because there was no other surface group, I will now place it here at the at Puerto Belgrano. So in the next turn it might enter these naval patrol boxes. Let's again check if these vessels will detect our fleet. This is not the case, only a one would possible here. And again, I forgot to draw a situation report card. Okay. So now we have to check if, um, if we get a scramble roll here, or if it is successful. And we're going to have this level 3 now. Oh, this is interesting. It says here supply interdiction now begins. So I might have made an error. I'm, I think. I think that was actually the first, well, it, yeah, that was the first turn I could do it. I thought I could have done that before, but I didn't do it because of the bad weather. So I guess overall it's all good. Let's see the rules here, what that say, what they say. 15. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Only from card 4. Yeah, simply because you're probably too far away from the islands so that you cannot do this. I guess that, that makes sense. Okay, and uh, so then let's roll a die. And remember now we got this, uh, because the weather is fair, we got a minus one modifier. So if we roll a 3 or less, we'll have an attack. And that is not a case, it's a 9. So again, nothing happens. It's the silence before the storm. Okay, and now at the end of the turn we come to this Harrier refitting step. So that means now we can take the Harriers that are in a flown box and place them here, move them to the arming box. And then, if there were Harriers in the arming box, we could have placed them in the ready box. So at the end of the next turn we can use these Harriers again. Okay, so that was 
May 4. Until now it's all pretty peaceful. We are slowly approaching the islands and uh, well, all we've seen is some some Argentine submarines patrolling the coast and uh, well basically the only kind of warlike act was this um, attacking or interception of the supply lines of the Argentines by our by our Harriers. And they have now a lot of a lot of these Exocet rockets. Which is not exactly great, but uh okay. Whatever. Um yeah. So you haven't seen too much, I guess. But uh, maybe that makes this thing a little bit realistic. And if you see it as a simulation or whatever, um, that might be a pro. Uh, yeah. So if you still want to look how the fighting goes and, and what can happen in this game. I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, bye.